What is up, guys? Kevin from the KO Sports Corner. The NBA trade deadline has come, and now it's gone. So every move that pretty much was supposed to be made, a lot of it went down. So bonus got traded. James Harden got traded. Kristaps Porzingis got traded, as well as CJ McCollum and many more players, which we're going to get into in this video. So make sure you like and subscribe and follow us for more content like this, as well as our social media is linked below. Let's just get into pretty much every single trade, give it a grade, see how each team either negatively got affected or positively got affected. Let's move on to the first team that made two significant moves, the Portland Trail Blazers first, uh, acquired Norman Powell and Robert Covington. That's a win trade for uh, in terms of the Clippers. But the Blazers do get Keon Johnson, who was the biggest piece. Also acquired Justice Winslow and Eric Bledsoe. So there's a lot to look into that trade. Probably Eric Bledsoe gets bought. Justice Winslow, this is a great scenario for him. He's going to go to a rebuilding team. He's going to be able to play a lot of minutes, prove what he's got. Keon Johnson, a very young, talented prospect guy who will pretty much turn out to be a good player for the Clippers. So I, I like that. So yeah, let's move on to the next Portland trade, which was them trading away CJ McCollum in exchange for a couple guys, Mikhail Alexander Walker, Josh Hart, Thomas Tadaransky. Uh, th that trade later turned out for Nikhil Alexander to go over to the Jazz and some other guys going somewhere else. But uh, Josh Hart was the big piece in that deal. They also gained probably a couple picks. So that's something good to hear in terms of Portland. That's easily, uh, I would say a B trade. I mean, New Orleans probably won't go anywhere this year. I feel bad for CJ. He was going to New Orleans. I wish he went to a team like, uh, who knows, like the Jazz would have been a nice fit or Cleveland would have been nice to see him go there. Sacramento. I mean, you really wish that he went to another spot, but it doesn't matter. Have, things happen. Next trade was Karis LeVert going over to the Cleveland Cavaliers in exchange for Ricky Rubio and a couple draft picks. I mean, it was a first rounder. You also got a two seconds. So this is an A trade. There's no other way to say it. Ricky Rubio is an expiring deal. He's in church for the rest of the season, so he's probably not going to go play for Indiana anymore. It was just so the cap could work. Karis LeVert goes over to Cleveland, which is a much-needed player, as he needs some wing guys, some shooting guard depth, some shooting guard help um, because of Colin Sexton's injury. So a lot there to look at. Let's move on to the next trade. The Montes Sabonis, Jeremy Lamb, Justin Holiday dealt over to the Sacramento Kings in exchange for Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, Tristan Thompson, and uh, a couple of draft picks where I think were involved from both ends. This is easily a, a, a C-plus trade for the Sacramento Kings. I mean, how do you lose Tyrese Halliburton? How do you trade away Halliburton? I don't think anyone expected him to go anywhere. I thought maybe you trade away De'Aaron Fox. You trade away someone else, but not Tyrese Halliburton, the guy who's been the best player on your on the team so far. He's been the best Sacramento King, putting up the best stats. Someone who's committed to a rebuild. Uh, you don't see too many players in the NBA who are committed to a rebuild. And someone like Tyrese, who reportedly he was teared up and everything, finding out he was no longer Sacramento King after seeing that he wants to turn things around in Sacramento. Indiana fleeced. Indiana fleece the Sacramento Kings in this trade. You also get an absolute monster shooter in Buddy Heald, who's one of the best three-point shooters in the league. He's a three-point contest winner, so that proves a lot. I mean, it proves that you can be a good three-point shooter. And then you also got Tristan Thompson, who I think he's expected to get bought out and show some interest in other teams. Let's move on to the next trade. All right, so this was a four-team deal. I'm going to read off what the trade was. The Kings continue to wheel and deal as they're trading Marvin Bagley to the Detroit Pistons. So the Kings are getting Josh Jackson, Trey Lyles from the Pistons. The Clippers are getting Semi Ojale and Rodney Hood from the Bucks. So this is just a very nice deal. And then the Bucks also acquired uh, Serge Ibaka. The Kings also acquired Dante DiVincenzo. So the Kings heavily bought. I think this is an overall fair trade for each side. The Clippers are getting some pieces that they'll use. Rodney Hood, obviously a very nice player, one healthy. So I, I do like that trade. Marvin Bagley going to a new home in Detroit. Um, he was not happy in Sacramento. It was very obvious. You know, you get his replacement in DeMontis Sabonis. Uh, Marvin Bagley is going to go to a very nice spot. I think he's going to fit very well down there with Isaiah Stewart who uh, at the moment I'm pretty sure is the starting center for the Pistons. You're also going to get some good action with Cade Cunningham, maybe some pick and roll. You could stretch the floor a little bit. I, I personally like it. Next trade was one that I think we all expected it to happen. Drogic, Goran Drogic from the T Toronto Raptors over to the uh, San Antonio Spurs. Very nice trade. Um, Drogic is getting traded for Thaddeus Young. 
uh, and Drew Eubanks, who was waved away from the Toronto Raptors. Drogic is going to get bought out. Uh, the teams that are expected to show interest are Bucks, Bulls, Clippers. Uh, honestly, don't expect expect the Miami Heat to show some interest. Uh, expect Dallas Mavericks to show some interest. I, I know they have Spencer Dinwiddie, but Drogic going to want to go to Dallas, I believe. I mean, you never know. So, uh, Raptors are also getting a 2022 second round here. The Celtics are trading away Bull Bull and P.J. Tucker to the Orlando Magic. Both players were injured. Uh, Atlanta, um, the Magic is just going to get some cap compensation, or Boston's going to get cap compensation, better said. So, nothing crazy there. Bull Bull, not, nothing much. The guy hasn't been good. He's barely been able to play. He's injured. P.J. Doisier, actually a very good player when you look at it. So, maybe that works out in the future. I know he's injured with an ACL injury. And the trade that everyone wanted to know, and if this man was going to get moved, James Harden. I'm going to go into depth on this one. James Harden gets traded away for Ben Simmons, Andre Drummond, Seth Curry, two first-round picks. And the Philadelphia 76ers get James Harden and Paul Millsap, which is also included in that trade. So let's look at it from the Philadelphia side. Philadelphia now gets James Harden in the pair with Joel Embiid. You kept Tyrese Maxey, and you kept Matisse Thybul. That is a win already for the 76ers. You keep Tobias Harris. You keep Matisse. You keep Furk on Korkmaz. Um, you, you put yourself in a position to contend this season, and that's what I like to see. You put yourself in that third seed, maybe even second. I do believe Miami will hold on to the first seed, not just because I'm a Heat fan, but when you look at that team and what they have and the trade acquisition they made in Victor Oladipo last year and doing it once again this year, as he's going to come back probably sooner rather than later, Miami put themselves in a prime spot to be that first seed. Not only that, they made a very, very smart deal, which we'll get into later, and I'll explain why. But looking at this from the Brooklyn side, Kyrie didn't want want James Harden. He's kind of glad he was glad that he got traded. Um, James Harden wanted out. Brooklyn saw the opportunity to trade James Harden because James Harden probably wasn't going to go back over to the Brooklyn Nets at the end of the season as he's a free agent. So we all, they all expect him to go to Philly. So may as well get the value now. Make that trade. Get Ben Simmons, Andre Drummond, who's a center that they very much need as they are center needy. You also get a player in Seth Curry who's going to spread the floor immensely, give another shooting guard there to place in the starting five. And then you get Ben Simmons, who essentially is very eager to play, very excited. You could place him at the power forward, and it just makes all the sense in the world. You're going to have the point power forward, uh, a couple of the guys controlling the ball there. And Ben Simmons is a player who played both an incredible offense as well as gave you some great defense as he was put up for defensive player of the year award. He was one of the options. So I very, very much like this trade for both sides. I'll give it an A plus for both sides. I'll give it a B. I'll give it an A for Brooklyn. And I'll give it an A plus for the 76ers as you acquired James Harden. You acquired Paul Millside, which is going to be a big time help, pretty much replacing Ben Simmons at the power forward. And you do not have to give up your young assets. That is what's best about this deal. I, I love it, man. And let's move on to the next trade. The Celtics are trading Josh Richardson over to the San Antonio Spurs in exchange for Derek White. Derek White is one of the top players on the Spurs this season, putting up 14 a game. Josh Richardson was a very movable player for the Celtics. And now the Celtics acquire technically the replacement for Dennis Schroeder, which we'll get into later. So Derek White going over to these Boston Celtics. I'll give this trade a B plus as the Spurs are getting a player in Josh Richardson who can maybe hopefully, I really do hope the best for Richardson, go up and make something happen. Derek White goes in there with a young, scrappy Celtics team, which is looking to make at least a play-in tournament spot out there. So we'll see. The Pacers are trading Corey, Torrey Craig to the Phoenix Suns in exchange for Jalen Smith and a second round pick. This is a perfect trade for the Pacers. I give this an A+. You get Torrey Craig, who was a huge piece of the Phoenix Suns NBA Finals team, and then uh, the Indiana Pacers get a very young, nice piece in Jalen Smith, who was proving to be a pretty good player overall. So this is an A-plus trade for both sides. Indiana gets a very young center uh, power forward who you need as you lost Monta Sabonis. You could even place him in the starting five. When Phoenix gets a player that they're in very much need of and a familiar face, and you know, that offense is run. So this is a great trade for both sides. This is actually one of the more interesting trades and one of the more shocking ones, but it was a very, it was a need. It was a need for Charlotte and they acquired Montrez Harrell from the Washington Wizards in exchange for Ish Smith and Vernon Carey Jr. So Wizards getting a little bit younger, but they also acquire a former face in Ish Smith who was on that team uh, two years ago. 
you get a young center in Vernon Carey Jr. So it just makes a lot of sense for that trade. And, uh, and I'm actually very happy with that trade. Charlotte going to get a guy who I hope they extend. He'll probably be on the starting five. Uh, so now you have him and Mason Plumley. Suns also acquired another point guard in Aaron Holiday, who was a nice piece for the Indiana Pacers two years ago. Signed with Washington Wizards this year and now traded over to the Phoenix Suns as they get some depth in the point guard spot. I like the trade overall. I'll give it a B-plus trade. You get some depth with the point guard. So now you have campaign. You have him. You could also play some at shooting guard. Uh, he's a very good player and very young, so I, I like the trade. The next big-time trade was Kristaps Porzingis getting traded over to the Washington Wizards in exchange for Spencer Dinwiddie and, um, and um, Davis Bertans. So this is a huge trade. You unload the contract of Porzingis, a guy who was very injury-prone, barely played with Dallas. I mean, he's played, but not as much as anyone expected. And the Dallas Mavericks acquire Spencer Dinwiddie to pair up with Jalen Brunson. And you also get a nice three-point menace in Davis Bertans. Bertans just didn't work out in Washington after the big season he had there. Uh, he signs a big deal. Now, unfortunately, the Dallas Mavericks have that deal. But you acquire Spencer Dinwiddie, which I was very shocked he got dealt because he was working out pretty well in Washington. But the rate the team was going just didn't look like it was going to work out. This is another surprise in my eyes. Dennis Schroeder and Ennis Freedom going over to the Houston Rockets in exchange for Daniel Tice. It's not that I'm surprised Schroeder got traded. I knew he was going to get dealt. I didn't expect it to be over to the Houston Rockets. I expected maybe the Lakers, the Clippers would have been a nice option. Who, who knows? But yes, uh, I, I, I do want to see Dennis Schroeder get bought out and go to another team. Uh, and this Freedom did get bought out already, so he's going to be active in that market. Daniel Tice is a big-time player. Boston gets him already on a four-year deal. Tice was putting up pretty good numbers in Houston as they need some big man help. So this is a fair trade on both sides. I like it. And that wraps it up. But the final trade I actually didn't mention was Casey Akpala going over to the Maya, to the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder in exchange for a 2026 first, uh, second round pick. This is a good trade. I do think Akpala is going to get bought out or waived. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. But... When you look at it, this is a good trade for Miami because now they clear another roster spot. They are able to sign Caleb Martin, who is on a two-way deal, and two-way players are not able to play in the playoffs. And they are able to go and pursue a big-time name in the buyout market as well as free agent market in general. So um, they were looking into P.J. Washington, Nick Batum, and uh, Rui Hachimura. None of those occurred. Obviously, I don't think that he had the, the capital to make that trade. They also keep Omer Yurtsevin. They kept Mark Keefe. So those guys probably will be back, or at least Mark Keefe, who's been injured since over 30 days, which is crazy. Um, when you look at it, it's, it's a good trade. Miami also gets um, um, the, the protections are removed from the first round, from the first rounder is the 2022 first rounder and the 2023 first rounder. So Good move there on that end. Uh, I'm very happy with my, my, my Miami did. They also acquired Victor Oladipo on the trade deadline from the Miami Heat. So that's a great acquisition as well. And that's where we're going to end it, folks. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. And peace out. We are going to be making another video, which will be going into depth on the James Harden trade right after this one.